Well, the jury deliberated just an hour before giving him the death penalty. Richard Glossop was sentenced to die, and he was supposed to die tonight, but his execution is now on hold. Glossop is the latest inmate in a controversial string of executions involving untested cocktails of IV drugs. Tonight, we take you to McAllister for a very rare inside look at death row. Allie Meyer interviewed the man who's next in line to die, and for the first time ever, we're going to hear from the widow of his victim. Here's News Channel 4's Allie Meyer. Worldwide attention fixed on Oklahoma State Penitentiary. We are one of a handful of states pushing ahead with state-funded execution for convicted murderers. Capital punishment has come under fire recently as lethal injection drugs became unavailable, opening the door for last minute legal maneuvering and reigniting the discussion on cruel and unusual punishment. There are 49 inmates on Oklahoma's death row. 44 of them are housed here at Oklahoma State Penitentiary. The execution chamber is also inside these walls. Interviews with death row inmates are rare as much of the execution process and their lives on the inside are still secret. In Oklahoma, death row is halfway underground, a metaphor really for the inmates who come here to live and to die. According to the Department of Corrections, the average execution age is 38 years old. Most prisoners will be housed here 12 years before their time is up. Richard Glossop has lived on H unit 17 years. His execution date was delayed twice and is expected sometime this year. We speak through bars and glass. His words pass through a metal grate. It, it's just like you're, it's like you're in a tomb and you're just waiting to die so you can finish it off. Glossop's tomb was sealed shut by two juries following the brutal murder of Barry Van Trees. It was 1997. Van Trees was the owner of the best budget inn in Oklahoma City. The motel handyman bludgeoned him to death while he slept in room 102. The state first arrested the young handyman, Justin Sneed, and then went after Glossop, alleging a case of murder for hire. My daughter begged him not to go that day. So she was seven. The murderers left Barry Van Trees's seven children fatherless. His wife, Donna Van Trees, a widow, the single mom of five young kids. The toughest job I ever had was to, how do you tell your kids that they're never going to see their dad again? 18 years since the day she lost her husband and Donna Van Trees is ready for his killer to die. She is unconcerned about a dignified or merciful death. Would I wish a cruel death on anyone? No. Would, I'm hoping that it's quick and that as long as it's quick. Justin, you're how old? This is a never before seen videotaped interrogation of the confessed killer, Justin Sneed. I don't think it's just you. I think there are more people involved, and uh, you can straighten out a lot of things, and I just don't think you should take the whole thing. Sneed was the state's star witness and really the only proof Glossop was involved at all. Both sides agreed, no question. Richard Glossop wasn't even in the room when Barry Van Trees was murdered. Prosecutors said in court, hiring out the murder was worse, paying for a man's death without even having to bother to carry it out. Is it all your idea, the whole thing? No, sir. Well, okay, tell me, you need to tell us about it. Justin Sneed was spared his life. He got a life sentence in exchange for his testimony against Richard Glossop. We say now that we're going to reserve the death penalty for the worst killers or the worst killings, and it's clear in this instance that Mr. Glossop uh, did not have the capability of taking another life. And it seems bizarre that the person who did got a life sentence. The Constitution forbids cruel and unusual punishment, and the Supreme Court uh, has expressed that we will not execute people cruelly, will not torture them to death. It goes against American values. And Oklahoma certainly has not persuaded me that we've uh, prevented that. The Oklahoma Death Chamber has a fresh coat of paint now, an updated protocol, and a to-do list 49 inmates long. A few doors down, Glossop, steadfastly declaring his innocence, says they pinned this crime on the wrong man. Has there ever been a time that you have admitted 
your guilt in this case? I don't have no guilt in this case. After the fact, I made some really stupid decisions. I'm not saying I didn't. And, but if stupid's a crime, I'm guilty of being stupid. But I sure, I've sure paid my price for that. Some wonder if his moral compass is significantly crooked enough to die for this crime. The dying part don't bother me. Everybody dies. But I want people to know that I didn't kill this man. I didn't participate. I didn't plan or anything to do with this crime. Without a doubt in my mind, they have who, who was responsible for masterminding it, who was responsible for um, covering it up afterwards, who was responsible for the actual crime. The U.S. Supreme Court will soon weigh in on Oklahoma's death cocktail. Does it serve up sufficient portions of mercy and justice? Legal delays brought Richard Glossop one more Christmas than he expected, 18 more Christmases than Barry Van Trees. Allie Meyer, News Channel 4. Richard Glossop's execution is currently stayed by the U.S. Supreme Court. Glossop got word of the delay yesterday afternoon, right after he'd been reunited with a daughter he hasn't seen in 25 years since she was 10 years old. Also yesterday, Gossip got a call from the Vatican with word Pope Francis was praying for him. As for Donna Van Trees, the victim's widow, she does not plan on attending the execution of her husband's killer whenever that day does come.